got to score. If forced into the half court, it could be a problem. So we take a look at our star watch for tonight. You got a couple of guys who can fill it up and in a hurry. Uh, Ramon Moore, 30 points against Georgetown. That Sandy performer can post up, can play the point if necessary. And Corey Fisher, the ability to bounce, get near the rim, hang, and get you to bite on the pump fake. Taking a look at our starting lineups for tonight. For the Temple Owls, a standard two guard set, although it's not a standard two guard. Juan Fernandez, big game last year to help knock off Villanova. And then up front, Scooty Randall, Lavoy Allen, and Michael Eric will try to figure out a way to have enough to be able to deal with Villanova's men in the front. Villanova goes out of a three guard set, something that certainly is a concern for this Temple team. Corey Fisher, Corey Stokes, Malik Wayne's three different styles all blend very well together. And Antonio Pena and Muftal Yaru give them good size on the inside. Being two teams from the Philadelphia Big Five, you would imagine they've seen each other a bunch. This is the 83rd meeting between the two teams, dating all the way back to 1921. Last time it was Temple by 10 at Temple. Here at the Pavilion, Villanova is 6-2. The last time Temple won a game here on the Villanova campus was November of 1990, a 70-57 win. I have not seen all the games, by the way, just so you know. Well, I was I, not here in 21. I, I was going to ask. Surely thereafter. <laughs> well, a sal youngster. Have Fran Dunphy, who played at LaSalle, coached at Penn, now coaches at Temple, and has had success everywhere he's gone in the Philadelphia Big Five, winner of three straight Atlantic 10 titles. And Jay Wright has known little but success here at Villanova. 213 wins as the head coach of the Wildcats, 335 now in his head coaching career. Villanova, the home white, Temple, the traveling black and cherry and white. And Villanova wearing the 1985 throwback jerseys tonight as we're underway. Scott Graham, Temple go! Minimum! Now the perimeter. Stokes posting up down low. A guard who can do that. Just got it sent right back at him, and it's going back the other way. Strong defensive play by Moore. Wow, I'll say. Uh, one thing you'll notice all night long, there'll be a lot of feet in the three-second lane by Temple. They help, and Allen, one of the superior interior defenders. Villanova showing the trapping pressure look. Now fall back out of it. They start the game in man. They will play some zone from time to time. Well, Scott Fernandez really shot the ball great yesterday at practice. So maybe he has seen the light. Long range for Randall. And off the front rim, Allen does what he does best and rebounded. Little jump hook. He's gotten so much mm -hmm. better at that since his freshman year. You must help on the bounce on that guy. He can convert. He's got a little turnaround jumper. Just plays under control, doesn't he? Interesting to watch that young man grow up. Now a senior out of Morrisville, Pennsylvania. Got a big billboard in town. It's very impressive. Yeah, how about that? Wow. Corey Fisher got his man in the air. There's the shot fake you talk about with the pump. Yaru on the putback. Now he is aggressive. He gets after it. Tenacious. And the big thing for Temple too is getting back. The bigs are going to have to run the floor. That's Eric. Tough match there for Fisher. Trying to hold his own inside. They flip it over the top. And Eric's, I thought he traveled with the ball. Instead, it's going to be contact on the ground and the foul call on Fisher. Yeah, he was helping out. Just grabbed him before the shot. A nice read by Allen. You can see the front job. And over the years, Jay's guys have done a wonderful job fronting as small as they are because they really put the hands up and blind the passer. First foul for the Wildcats, first team foul. Long range, it's around and good for Moore. He's got double figures in 14 of his 16 games as a starter. And a three-point lead for the Temple Owls. This place will get very loud tonight. It is a gigantic home court advantage for the Wildcats. And it is the relationship like taking Williams away from the ball. Be a tough match on the bounce for him. Pena showing some range, but the miss and the foul call will be on Yaru as he picks up his first. So far, a half court game. Advantage Temple. It's not what Jay Wright wants to be playing here. The 42 game winning streak at the Pavilion. They haven't lost here since January of 07. Uh, two classy guys, great coaches as well. Got a chance to watch. Nice pass by Fernandez. He gives it up early. Let you do the job. Fernandez trying to buy one, took the dive, didn't get it. 
Yaru on the inside. Fighting nice. his way up, and it's taken away by Eric. How about that? Physical play by the big fella. Into the lane, and the runner won't go for Randall. The foul call will be on Villanova already their third in these first three minutes. Not that Villanova's players didn't know, but they know right now Temple is here to play. Terrific defensive reaction. We saw the alley-oop or the dump down to Eric. He has gotten better as well. So Scooty Randall to the free throw line. Started his first game this year in the opener. And off the miss. Has been a 73% shooter during the course of the season for the junior out of Philadelphia. We can play in and out, too. Can bite you deep. So the four-point lead now for the Owls. And Fran's biggest concern was the ability to use the dribble and get by you. Thus far, Temple's been flawless. Automatic switching on the perimeter. That's what Fisher does best. And that's a goaltending call on Eric Counter. Tough to keep them away all game long. Great knowledge, and I love the ability to hang in the air by Fisher. Big, strong kid. Now, you've seen Fernandez for quite a while. I love the, the, the variety of passes he comes up with. It's true. Yeah. So creative. Yeah. And a good look right there to a wide open Randall who can't hit on the three. That foul call is going to be on Eric going up over the back of Mukhtal Yaru. And that's one thing they stressed yesterday, Temple, at practice. Offensive rebound. That time, once the guy has position, give it up. Rand Dunphy, his fifth season at Temple after a marvelous coaching career at Penn. All-time leader in coaching wins at the University of Pennsylvania. A school close to your heart, I might add. You might add. Yeah. That's Waynes. Got it. Just inside the three-point arc. Now that's big because now Fernandez has got to be concerned with the shot and the drive. Tough combo. Waynes has been in a bit of a shooting slump in the early part of the season. That's a good nice shot for Nova. And now here comes a two-on-one. Nice catch by Pena. How about the run by the big fella, too? All set up by excellent Reed. Waynes stepping in. 6-0 Nova run. Ooh. And an unforced error as Moore airmails one out of bounds. So a timeout on the floor. 15-51 to go in the first half. The Wildcats up by two. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance.
out here at Villanova enjoying a run by the Wildcats. A 6 0 run to put them on top by two. And Villanova defensive pressures, forcing Temple to make it some decisions. Well, Scott, what they do, they put a big guy up here on occasion to regard, but all of a sudden, when Fernandez doesn't have it, there are other guys there to have to make a decision. You've got to post up stronger. They get the run out. It ensues on the next particular trip. Fernandez, again, you see the big guy, tough to make the look to him. Turnover from good control. Now you're on your heels a little bit of your Temple. Got to handle the pressure. And again, that's part of what Jay Wright is trying to do in this game, which is, you know, bring the pace. Get it out of just being a half-court game. Mm -hmm. He'll learn how to dress this kid, though. Yeah, what are you going to do? It's two for one sale. <laughs> Malik Wayne's bringing it up for the Wildcats, a sophomore out of Philadelphia. Starters remain on the floor out of the timeout. Neither one of these teams goes extensively deep with their bench. Got eight players. Shot clock winding down, and Fisher a bump and a foul call on Fernandez. He doesn't agree. I'll tell you, it's really tough when you're out there alone. I mean, you really need some assistance. You got to get an angle. Those fans would have liked that. Not to, but they cannot play without this guy. He just never got the right angle. And you see Fisher, who really does push it. Not afraid to take some contact as well. Stokes. That's his shot. Catch and shoot. Count him. He stretches the D. Cats have made four in a row now. Tough to see over Pena out there. And almost another one. And more. This is what helps though. Nice oh. hands by Fisher. Fisher picked his pocket. Couldn't get the finish. What a play by Moore. Now Stokes for three. Yaru got a hand on it. Three shots at it for going over. Didn't work. Well, you can't chill out there, can you? Great reaction defensively. And that's what Nova saw a lot of last year at the Leah Gore Center. Okay, he worked yesterday, got a lot of shots in, had a lot of confidence in his stroke. As a complete package. What a marvelous defensive play that well, was. Not quitting on it. Exactly. Then as a guard, you got to run as hard as you can and lay it up. Respect the D. Little stack series. Wow. Close, huh? Yep. And Yaru gets fouled by Eric. That'll be his second. Well, anytime you have a breakaway like this, you've got to go as fast as you can and just take that layup. Use the rim to protect, but you're right. Terrific effort. Didn't quit on it at all. Kids, you're watching, don't quit. Mm -hmm. And Mutal Yaru will go to the line. As we said, Eric picking up his second foul. Dave Jefferson helped to come in. What a nice athlete he is. Nice prospect, too. And Yaru gets the friendly bounce. So Raleigh Jefferson, also Dominic Cheek coming into the game for Villanova. First substitutions on either side. Friend, I were talking about the great athletes out of that area of Chester. Jameer Nelson, I remember Emerson Boehner years ago. And of course, my backcourt made Tony Abbott claims he was the best. <laughs> and Fran, who ended up coaching with him, would question that as well. And a lane violation there on Villanova, negating the second free throw. We'll stay with the pressure, though. They don't have trouble against Marlins full court pressure, but basically they're solid against that. Villanova playing straight up man defense. That's a Pretty. nice move by Moore. Well, he is confident. Nice clear out. Good deployment. He's got five. And Temple back to within one. Cheek, who's starting to shoot the ball much better. With a big three against LaSalle on the floor right now. Yaru firing an air ball. And out of the back comes Fernandez on the run. He thinks better of it one on three. Yeah, he does read well, doesn't he? Fernandez paints himself into a corner. A good look inside. And more for three. Got it. What a kick out. Great recognition by Randall. 
Great patience in the five. Ramon Moore's got eight. Temple back on top, 14 to 12. This one's Temple's pace now. Mm -hmm. Tough and shot. Hardly set with his feet to make the shot. And Temple looks to press the advantage. A little bit of a settle on offense that trip. Nice kick back. That's a great look. Got to get back. We get a foul call on the rebound. It's going to go against Temple. ESPN, the home court of college hoops. Friday countdown to the new year with the college basketball marathon on ESPN2. Day begins at noon Eastern in the Big Ten. John Sherdle leads Northwestern against Juwan Johnson and Purdue. Two Eastern College of Charleston taking on Scotty Hobson and the Tennessee Volunteers. College basketball on ESPN2 Friday. Both games also available online at ESPN3.com. That Tennessee team, the only team that has beaten over to this point. They yeah, missed a few in a row there. Really were struggling, but they played great, I thought, against Villanova. Teddy Hobson was sensational in that particular game. That was the championship game at Madison Square Garden of the NIT season tip-off. Tough shot. And he hit it. Pull up. Dominic Cheek rattling it home. Tie in the game at 14. He is tough with his length defensively. He is a guy you got to be concerned with. And it's knocked out of bounds by Wayne's Temple will keep it when we come back. Nice job by Villanova of coming back after Temple shot itself to a lead. First at noon Eastern, two high caliber defenses meet up in the Monarchy Car Care Bowl. South Florida takes on clubs at 3.30 Eastern. Georgia Bulldogs, their 14th straight bowl appearance against 25th ranked Central Florida in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. And at 7.30 Eastern, Steve Spurrier tries once again to beat the Seminoles. South Carolina Gamecocks take on Florida State in the Chick-fil-A Bowl. Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN Friday. All three games also available online at ESPN3.com and on your phone. So as we come back out of the timeout. Nice trap, perfect spot, closes the timeout, terrific read. That was Wyatt just coming in and being forced into the timeout. So Temple will take the 30-second timeout to save the possession. We mentioned that these teams last year had themselves an interesting battle. Temple stunning the number three Wildcats at the Leah Corris Center. By Juan Fernandez, 33 points, seven for nine from three-point range. And that helped give Temple a 75 to 65 win. Snap the Owls four game losing streak against Villanova. And it was Temple's first win over a top five team since beating number one Cincinnati 
back in February of 2000. They stormed the floor. I was down there when they beat Tennessee. They did the same thing. Nice to see. And what a guy to follow John Chaney when you think of it, Scott. Yeah. And it's just like style. Man, not the least bit. Very humble guy. Just does his job, Fran Dunphy. And John Chaney's, you know, completely endorsed that selection as he was on his way out. Tough follow the legend. I felt that way for guys who followed me and my coach. Of course. Career, yeah, know. absolutely. Didn't take them long to forget about it, though. <laughs> Wall screen to the empty. They do a nice oh. job. Look, see, that's the kind of beat. Comes up with these deliveries that are amazing. A lot of old fashioned stuff. He's going to have to pull one out of the hat right here with two on the timer. And that's going to be a shot clock violation. Mm -hmm. Just a very tough sequence from the trap to the end. An excellent defense stepped up by Villanova. Curl series Fisher uses the post rub. Excellent denial by Moore. Excuse me, Scott. I ain't feeling all the fans are thinking this game's going in slow motion right now. <laughs> Very subdued audience. Shot clock at five. Waynes. Good. Nice. Look for Armwood. How about that? Once you turn the corner, they can exploit you with the jam or the kick for three. Excellent read. It's all Fran harped on the other day was a uh, nice lob pass. That's yeah, good call. Good call. That's goaltending and the basket will count. Credit to LaVoy Allen. Fran was saying keep guys in front of you. It's very difficult to guard. How about this? The look gorgeous, the finish easy at this level. Is A. Armwood not a tremendous amount of playing time early in this season. And part of that tremendous sophomore class. Three of which are on the floor right now. He had a little back trouble too, didn't he, for a few weeks or yep. a week at least. He went down at practice one day. And it, a game and a half for him to get back. Here's Fisher. Tough shot. Off the iron. Allen just relentless to the basketball but couldn't hang on to it that yeah, Jay lets them play loose a lot of people go oh, why do you shoot that but that's that it gives them the, the rain the free rain to drill shots like that you hear Jay Wright talking to his players when he talks about these situations it'll say get the ball right here shot or make a play mm -hmm. he's had some talent to make plays too oh wow oh, away with it he sure did. Yeah. Armwood got rejected. Jefferson getting up to knock it away. Nice. And then the kick. Great job by Cheek with the quick hands. Going up against Allen. Got the block. And you rule the putback. They run the floor. Good push to the goal, even with the block. The bigs got down. Pressure again. Another steal. Ooh. Oh. And a step to the ball. Here's a double. Allen finding the open man. Jefferson got himself in trouble. A held ball. Possession arrow belongs to Temple. Isaiah better be careful there. Armwood just discarding it at the end of that particular play. Yeah, Armwood will take a seat now as Pena comes on to get him. I think it's a key period now with Fernandez getting a little bit of a blow right now. Who's going to run the show? Who's going to be the decision maker? Got to be more, right? Mm -hmm. He moves to the point. Wyatt off the ball. Shot clock did not reset. It's down to five. Allen unaware. They were unaware that the shot clock hadn't reset. Now, you notice, Fran, though, a lot of coaches might be upset, but... He likes to get late in the shot clock, and normally they make good decisions late. They are struggling now, not getting into their offensive set under 10. I think he's got to be very happy with the pace of this game so far. Yeah, no question. It's the big team for Villanova. And Cheek up top. Can't hit it. More uncontested for the rebound. Good position D checking everybody out. Oh, 
Long range and a challenge shot, but more there for the rebound. That's Wyatt. Ooh. That one was ugly. <laughs> Good look again. If at first you don't succeed, try three times. Played great effort on the glass. That Scooty Randall keeping it alive. And Temple has knotted it up again at 18. Now if you don't shoot it well from deep, you usually get a chance for that offensive rebound. Hayden trying to square up, maybe shot a little quick. And that one does such a nice job sealing. And that will be a travel. Well, the Owls turn over their seventh. And that brings us to a timeout on the floor. A standoff so far here at Villanova in the Philadelphia Big Five. Five ties, three lead changes, and this is one of those ties with 7.46 left to go as Juan Fernandez comes back out onto the court. A nice job uh, without him a little bit. You know, they just don't have the same kind of recognition. A couple of turnovers when he was out, but nice job resting him, giving him the TV timeout. Now he's back fresh, and you have to be to contain a guy like Malik Williams. i got to imagine that he's going to be looking at 36, 35, 37 minutes tonight. Mm -hmm. Moore going to be called for the blocking foul down along the baseline as he tried to get in the way of Fisher on the drive. His first team's fifth. You know, it's so hard to make a team that wants to play slow, quick, force them quick. And Villanova did a pretty good job with those traps, but you got to score to get it set up. That's an air ball from Stokes. We were talking with former Villanova head coach Steve Lapis before the game. He said, yeah, easy to slow a team down if you want to. Hard to speed them up. Mm -hmm. Every shot is challenged by Temple. They've been excellent on the defensive end. So no change and a find opposite. That's Randall. Got it. Great job by Fernandez. That was all him. And another lead for Temple as we cross the seven-minute mark. Randall's got five. That was all about the feed. Mm -hmm. Juan Fernandez. A little different than Pepe Sanchez, too, isn't he? Yeah. With the style of play. Fabian, a little bit short. 
Although right here he looks a little like Becky Sanchez. Yeah. This is where he'll bite you. Yeah. Now they got yeah. Oh my! Jay Wright can't believe it. It's going to be a chance at a three-point play for Juan Fernandez. That's what they do. We talked about every once in a while. You relax. And the head of the club right here. Good read. Feels he can get by. Gets in his mind a pretty good angle. And you can see just a little bit of motion. Sure, Jay wanted that bang bang play. But such a smart kid. That takes Fisher out of the game with his second foul. See the numbers on Fernandez. Somewhat down so far, but you're only talking about an 11 game sample. And a miss on the free throw with a chance to extend the lead to five. Biggest lead. Temple by four. Nice play. Yeah, Rue couldn't finish. Neither could Pena, but you got a foul call on the floor. And it's going to be on LaVoy Allen. Well, clubs have such a hard time dealing with that screen and roll on that weak side where they empty. And people get in there a little late. And one thing Temple usually does, they split that basket and pick up that charge. Here's the empty side roll. Great deployment and a pretty good step up. Maybe a little motion forward cost them. Allen got Pena the way up and free throw line. Pena makes his first. A 74% shooter on the year. TJ DeLeo now coming into the game and Fernandez gonna take another seat. Look for Villanova to make that really step up the pressure, see if they can cause some havoc. Warren DeLeo playing catch against that pressure. Nice spin out. Good job of breaking that pressure by Temple. Jefferson wanted the return pass right at the foul line. He was open. <laughs> he was ready to go, too. Four. Oh, my! And contact is going to set him to the free throw line. Well, they do a nice job on dribble exchange, read, occasionally run a postman up as they did there. But right here, you get the angle. Nice little slide through. The slender body into the rim. That was number two on your room. Fisher already sitting with two fouls for going over. The Moose playing a lot of confidence. Isn't he in the offensive end? He is. You see Fisher sitting. You see the 30 points December 9th against Georgetown. It was a night that his coach won his 400th career game. For such a young guy, I know he's at 403 and climbing. I'm not sure he would agree on the young guy part. <laughs> well, compared to me now. <laughs> Everybody jams when the ball goes opposite. They're doing a tremendous job in the half court defense. They sure are. Late in the shot clock again. Looks right up their alley. Range crossing over twice. And now Pena knows he's running out of time. Had to take it away, but a foul call with two left on the timer. Woo! What a killer. A great defensive trip, but alertly putting it on the deck and getting to the rim. Pena. Oh, the second on Jefferson. Everybody stays at home. Weak side assistant stepping up. But Pena, a very astute looking up at that clock. Now Yaru sits with his two fouls. It's amazing. It's, so, it's like the library. Not that I visited that often in my younger days, but you know, it's like the crowd just waiting for something to happen in the tempo. Full control of Temple. Agreed. That's how Temple had to play this game in a lot of ways. He said that we don't have as many big, high-powered playmakers as Villanova has. He's playing a different style, and it's working right now. As Pena reigns two to keep his team within two. Pena's got six. And now the different look. They have the guard at the point. Some quick hands out front, some length with Cheek and Williams. Good handle. Hernandez a bounce pass, the kick back out, more for three, got it! Whew. He is hot! And Fernandez is hot as well, that was all him, breaking down the D, everybody now scurrying into cover, the kick to the corner. Moore leads all scorers with 13, he's four for four from the floor. Five-point Temple lead their biggest as we cross the five-minute mark left here in the first half.
Now for Villano, it's going to be all about stops at the other end. Really tough to make this team play quickly. Stokes open at the top, left it short. Tipped rebound, arm with the putback. And I think Cheek got a piece to keep it alive. Pretty good hustle. That ended six straight missed shots for Villanova. DeLeo. And now Fernandez back into his hands as he sets the offense. They tease, don't they? Tease you and pry, then bring it back and control it. Up on the top and long range rattles home for Scooty Randall. Jay Wright needs a timeout. His team now down again by six. Magic in Fernandez's game. Just a nice feel, totally under control. Knows exactly where people are located. They say, don't leave your feet. Don't tell him. Richly rewarded by Randall. ESPN, the home court of college hoops. Friday, ESPN 2's New Year's Eve college basketball marathon highlighted by two great games. Kenny Boyden, Florida Gators taking on Xavier. Six Eastern, Jared Soldier leading the Ohio State Buckeyes against the Indiana Hoosiers. College basketball at ESPN2 Friday. Both games also available online at ESPN3.com. Jared is a man. He can really post up and do some damage. A great feel for the game. They had a high school coach, but Brother JJ helped in that recruiting. Temple coming into this game with a 9-2 record. They were 3-2. After losses to California and Texas A&M, but since that time, six straight wins, including wins against Maryland and nationally ranked Georgetown. Enjoying their largest lead of this first half now as we cross the four-minute mark. Stokes made space for the shot, couldn't get it. Boy, tough. Well, that's not a good set there. Step back jumper challenged. Moore in rhythm. Finally found a way to miss. And the smallest guy on the floor walks out with the rebound. Got numbers here. And Waynes was throwing an alley-oop, I think. It was halfway between a shot and a pass. And Pena gets called for the foul on the floor. You, you know, I think you're right, except the defense recovered on him. because He sort of got stuck in the air. Jay Wright's team trying to find answers with a timeout on the floor and 334 left to go in the half.
Philadelphia Big Five has been around for a long time. Temple won it last year. Villanova the year before with perfect records. And you see that these two teams have had a well, kind of a pretty strong hold on what's happened in the Big Five in recent years. They sure have. He's going back to the great days of St. John. I want that pen stuck in there. Huh? How about that, huh? How about that? The alma mater. And yours? Uh, they've been struggling of late. No question about it. Hopefully they can get it going. John Zanini, good man. Had a tough run the last few games, as you well know. Yep. Fernandez has been spectacular, I think. Great control, four assists, four rebounds, five points. This is the weave, and they'll turn the corner at the appropriate time or use that high ball screen. Good denial by Waves. He's got a foul, though, unfortunately, for him. So Waves called for it. That's going to put Villanova up over the limit as Waves gets his first, and it means free throws the rest of the half on both sides. You know, Villanova, even when there's a half court set, they're not pushing the ball up quickly, get running. I mean, there's a way of like invigorating yourself emotionally. That's what this college basketball game is all about. Right now, the emotions favor Temple. And the scoreboard is as well. Biggest lead for the Owls here in the first half, trying to stretch it to eight now. And is looking for a seventh point. He's had a, a hand in. Just about everything that's gone on, though, specifically in setting up his teammates. Well, Fran running a minute out. And apart from his rest, I wonder if he feels great either. You know what I mean? Well, he is sitting back down again, and freshman Aaron Brown comes on to spell him as we cross three minutes to go in the half. Waynes can't get it. Trying the put back, it counts. Well, he took over that trip. Now they talk about Lowry. He's got a little of that in him. An aggressive performer, not afraid to put it on the deck and attack. And amongst the bigs, able to persevere. Quick up and a finish. Kyle Lowry, a good friend of Malik Wayne's. And, and the game's somewhat similar. Again, Wayne's just a sophomore. Already showing a lot of signs of maturing as a player in the early part of this season. He's got five. Fernandez back in here. Not wasted any time. But they're just yo yo him in and out. He's keeping him fresh. Good luck. And more to the baseline. Can't get the up and under. Oh, got to finish that. This is what Villanova wants, but they don't have the numbers. Well, Temple just did a great job balancing the floor. That starts a shot. But if you push it, you can get those opportunities on kickbacks in the early offense. Big time stroke by Corey. And Villanova quickly back to within two. Crowd starting to bubble the life now here at the pavilion. How about that silencer? Woof. Fernandez sits him right back down. You could tell yesterday that this kid was starting to feel pretty good about himself. Good practice stroking it. Ten first half points for Fernandez. Temple by five. Little Little hole. Cut. That's going to be a foul on freshman Aaron Brown. Now the ball movement excellent because the push gets the defense back settled. They can't attack them. One thing they worked on yesterday was the ability of Stokes to shoot. And whatever you need, this kid can provide the lift. Juan, any time on the money. Stokes, a superb free throw shooter, has missed only once this year in 31 attempts. I almost did it. Yeah, I know, it's amazing. I looked at that number going, how about that? What's he like, 88 for his career, I think I saw. And Brown taking a quick seat once again. Corey Stokes, now a senior out of Bayonne, New Jersey. There's the only miss in a big five game at the Palestra. Yeah, the lights were dim, I think. Threw him off. Next two minutes are key, I think, right now for Temple. There's your second miss. The old jinx, huh? Apparently so. Allen can feed. Good cut. And it produces a trip to the free throw line for T.J. DeLeo. Well, these are two well-coached teams. I mean, the reaction on the trap by Villanova. The close in the back just a little bit late. Uh, but the dive here, don't stand still. Help the center. And Allen, very unselfish. DeLeo, an accomplished player and 
High School in South Jersey. Player of the Year at Cinnamon's in High School. Once scored 50 points in a game. Ooh. Played for that under 20 team in Germany as well, which certainly helped them. Plays with a lot more confidence. Should be shooting at a better number. Just struggling a little with that shot. And Fernandez again taking a break. This is an interesting strategy. It's almost offense defense. Yeah, very much so. Cutter not there. Wayne's a little floater. The teardrop will fall. Boy, he has worked on that baby. Usually a little closer. Almost a little bit of a hook on that one. He's got seven points now here in the hand. Gets his team back within four. Nice. Oh, that's Wayne's diving on the ball that produced the potential steal. They say it last touched Temple's foot. And Wayne's with the hustle produces the turnover. What great effort. And that stimulates the audience a little bit now. It's been pretty quiet. see if that's the case they're saying it hit Waynes and then last touched the foot of Moore before going over the end line call made by Jock Hale down on the baseline they really spread you on the offense you have to defend a lot of the areas the outside shooting particularly of Corey Stokes and that's what he's improved at I think put it on the deck a little bit He's always a good standstill shooter, but he's improved his game. Fernandez will come back in now as Aaron Brown just picked up his second. That is 10 team fouls now for Temple. So two shots now the rest of the way for Villanova. I think Juan's going to be tired going in and out. A lot of getting up, getting down. Right. Smart play, though. Resting it to the appropriate time. Plus, when you think of it, the one area that he may have a little trouble is containing the dribbler. The speed of the Villanova kids, so that could be another reason for it. Offense is definitely need him. And so Brown takes his seat. And Stokes gets one more try. Eight points on the night tonight. He'll take a seat as Armwood comes on to spell him. Back to a two-point game now with 104 left to go in the half. Well, this is the biggest group I've seen them play. Would you agree, Villanova? Huge, it? yep. Yeah. The frontline guys and Cheek as the second guard. A lot of bigs on the floor at the same time as they try to get arms in passing lanes. Would have been surprised to see them play zone out of this look, but they... I think give it to Fernandez out here, let him take... That stays the same way. Last touching Sutton. 12 left on the shot clock. But the matchup, I, I think with Cheek on Fernandez, let him dribble. Dribble, drive, and fine. Fernandez to key the inbound. Now Fernandez with the ball in his hand. Push on the cheek, and he pushed off with the arm. He says, yep, you got me. That's his second. Oh, no foul? Yeah, and I give it to Cheek first. You're right. Oh, I saw the God. arm come out. I think Cheek must have reached in. Wow. It's quite opposite us, because Jay did not believe it at all. I guess it was there. It was there before the arm. The whistle came a little bit late, but the foul call was on the reach on his left arm before he extended the forearm. Well, you, you were tempted when you play Fernandez to go for the ball, though. It looks like it's a high dribble. Maybe he can't control it as much, but he has the innate ability to protect it and ward you off. Terrific numbers. Four rebounds and assists to go along with it. And Allen coming down with a rebound. And there's going to be a foul call against Villanova on the rebound. It's on Pena. Yeah, he had that arm tucked in there. Well, they worked on this yesterday, Temple, as well. Leaning in and shoving, pushing, getting people under the rim right over here. You can see how much Allen has taken over. And the crowd didn't like that at all. They're voicing their displeasure. Not that that's going to bother LaVoy Allen all that much. His numbers really don't tell you how good he is. He doesn't, I think he could do more offensively, but that's within the framework of the game. He doesn't force any issues. 
He's solid across the board. Fran loves his defense and his help. Not a good foul. Now that gives him a chance to make two, set the press up. A lot of bad things can happen for Temple right now. Sarcastic applause from the crowd as Villanova will get two shots off that foul. The Wildcats, four of their five starters with two fouls as we wind down this first half. Yeah, Jay knew this would be one of those grind them games and a lot of half court situations. You've got to deploy properly, attack, try and speed it up somewhat with the three quarter and half court pressure. Stokes with now seven of one of his last nine points. Maurice Sutton coming into the ball game, and also James Bell. Freshman getting his first action here in the final 30 plus seconds of the first half. And if you're going over right now, one thing you can say is Temple's done a lot of things right and they're still only up by two. No, no, I mean, there's uh, no question about Well, this is a good basketball team. We know that. Uh, it's just a change of the style. It's not coming as easily. Look at the big guys up front. The perfect trap. He got the half court and the sideline. And they and got it. a timeout. Crowd wanted a five second call. It was coming. But instead, Villanova forces Temple into taking the timeout to save the possession. You got to ring the bell. You got to score to get that press set up. And something they had some problems with. He has played some different people out there, too, Jay. Well, a mix of. Different guys trying to stop this guy, Juan Fernandez. A great understanding of the game. A little kiss shot and one. A little tardy on the reaction on the jump shot. Big time player. Really has an understanding. International basketball certainly doesn't hurt him. A confidence of a coach to run a club. The friend was saying yesterday, it's hard for us to play without him. It's just terrific leadership qualities. You know, a couple of years ago when they played here, and it was almost two years ago to the day. It was the first day that Fernandez would have been eligible to play. I remember walking into the pavilion and seeing Fran Duffy saying, are we going to see this guy tonight? He said, you know, I don't know that he's ready to go right now, but boy, it's tempting to play him. <laughs> As P.S. He did not play in the game. She's going to run a little trap at some point here just to jump up down to 10. That's where you want the ball now as the clock winds down. Cheek at a disadvantage, and he knows it. Fernandez, terrific read. So he reached out and grabbed. That'll give Villanova a chance to get an offensive team on the floor for after the free throws, but he was beaten. Now, good players, the ball ends up in their hands at the appropriate time. He didn't care about the contact by Sutton. He knew he could beat with the bounce. Cheek. Good basketball game. It is. It really is. A lot of sound plays, a lot of strategy, a lot of substituting here and there, particularly on the Villanova side to see if they can shake up this heady Temple team. The Temple team last year won 29 games, They're taking their third straight Atlantic 10 championship. And they went to the first round, and a lot of people raised an eyebrow at the draw they got as Fran Dumpy went against his former assistant, mm -hmm. Steve Donahue and Cornell, and they lost. Are you suggesting something there? Uh, no, I'm sure it was purely chicanery? by accident. No, I'm sure it, oh, it happened purely by accident. Because he's doing a great job up at BC right now. He's a good coach. Hernandez, one out of two. A little half court night. I like this right now. Forced them to use some clock. They got a guy with a lot of speed to get it down the floor. Got the shot away in time. And it's good. Malik Waynes never lost his head. Wow. What recognition, not only of the trap, the clock, the pirouette, and a little nylon to boot. And that really excites your club. A little emotion involved. Maybe a little bit lacking. But how about this? Right down. You don't get the trap closed. A little bit of a crossover. This is an amazing reaction, don't you think? Oh, Scott. Ooh. Get the puppies organized. Warm it up by Williams. What works, works. Mm. So we have halftime in a one point game. Temple on top of Villanova, 40 to 39. Now let's send it to Ryan Byrne, Miles Simon back in the studio.
Welcome into the ESPN3.com Halftime Report. I'm Cassidy Hubbard. Coming up, we'll go all access with the number one ranked Duke Blue Devils and get to know the men behind Coach K. But first, for the latest on what's going on around college hoops, let's send it over to the college basketball scoreboard crew. Guys, take it away. Hey there, welcome to our college basketball studios. Ryan Burr and Sean Farnham. And Sean, it is a uh, great New Year's Eve on the ESPN Family Networks as we bring in the new year with plenty of great college basketball action. Take a look at the six games on the network. How about at noon, Northwestern at number 11, Purdue. Purdue heads into this Big Ten season without Robbie Hummel. Have to take it on a Northwestern team that uh, has fared very well in the non-conference. What to watch for should be a fun one. Friday at high noon, Northwestern just 3-37 in their last 40 road games versus a ranked opponent. Indeed, Sean, the work is cut out for them. Well, and they've never made the NCAA tournament. Their first three games in the Big Ten this year are on the road against Purdue. They're at home against Michigan State, back on the road against the Illini. They need to get at least one of those if they're going to be successful and have an opportunity to make a run in the NCAA tournament. And for Purdue, it's business as usual. They had to play without Robbie Hummel a year ago. They're being asked to do it once again. And Moore and Johnson, they're really stepped up and they've elevated their play. The focus at the defensive end is going to be key for the Boilermakers. When you look at Purdue, and we've already seen them go on the road and win at Michigan, now they're coming home. When you look at this Purdue team, how do you think, how do you think they fit in the Big Ten? Well, I think they're going to get off to a great start, and a lot of that has to do with their schedule. You know, as difficult as the schedule Northwestern has right out of the gate, you look at Purdue, they're taking on uh, Northwestern at Penn State, then Iowa. Their first game against a, ro a road-ranked opponent will be the Illini in the middle of the month. So the Purdue Boilermakers have a great opportunity to set themselves apart from the rest of the conference right away. All right, as we said, six games on ESPN and the Family Network's coming up on New Year's Eve. What to watch for 4 o'clock. Florida at Xavier. Interesting game on a couple different accounts as these two go non-conference to bring in the new year. Yeah, Xavier has the second longest active home win streak in the entire country. They have one of the best guards in the entire nation in two Holloway that can do so many things. Had a triple-double against Wake Forest. I think the biggest key overall for the Florida Gators in this game is they have got to limit their turnovers. They're turning the ball over way too high of a clip right now if they're going to be successful in SEC play. And I know this is a non-conference game, but you're going on the road against a very good team in the A-10. Clean it up before you get to conference. Looking at Billy Donovan's club, a little surprised at where they're at right now? I think so. I think there's a couple things. Besides just the turnovers, the lack of attention to detail on the defensive end of the floor, they're allowing opponents to get some really easy looks against them in their half-court set. But again, when you're talking about the SEC, and the SEC's down a little bit right now, only two teams ranked nationally, you're going to have to elevate your play if you're going to want to compete at the level in which Florida Gator fans are expecting this team to get to. And finally, we bring in the new year with the 10 o'clock game. We head out to Gonzaga, where the Zags will host Oklahoma State 10 o'clock in the East on ESPN2 New Year's Eve. I'll be dressed in a tuxedo, working the court with Dave Fleming, looking sharp. Trust me, you're going to love it, Ryan. But this is going to be a game with two great interior presence. Robert Sock has really elevated his game for Gonzaga. Marshall Moses has been an interior force this year for Coach Travis Ford down low. Seeing him back at the 76 Classic, he has the ability to turn it on. I think the key is Keaton Page. Can he stretch the defense on the road in a difficult place where only five teams have won inside that building up in Spokane? And the other question mark clearly has to be the health of Stephen Gray, the preseason Wooden Award candidate who missed the last game due to his back spasms that he suffered down at Baylor. Is he going to be at 100%? And Mark Few, year in, year out, he tests Gonzaga with the non-conference. Certainly, uh, they travel more miles than anyone this year. From what you've seen from the Zags, what kind of team do you think they'll be come March? I think they're going to be just fine inside the WCC conference, but I still think St. Mary's is a step above them right now, mainly because of inconsistencies at their guard play. They don't have the point guard play that we're accustomed to seeing out of Gonzaga, and I think that's going to hurt them But when it comes time for March. And I, this is a team this year that could be a one-and-done team in the NCAA tournament. And, Sean, let's finish up. Cincinnati taking on Seton Hall. Big East tilt. 
Cincinnati, the one unbeaten team that absolutely no one is talking about. Do you see them heading into 2011 still unblemished? Yeah, they'll be unblemished heading into 2011. The biggest key is going to be when the bulk of that Big East schedule comes to play. Is this team going to rise up to the challenge, or do they schedule themselves appropriately to be a 500 team in the Big East and make their way into the NCAA tournament with over 20 wins? Uh, please join us on ESPN, ESPN2 on New Year's Eve for a great tilt of college basketball. For Sean Farnham, I'm Ryan Burr. Happy New Year to you. Coming up, Coach K is one of the best in the world, but is hiring his former players his secret to his success? We'll get to the assistant coaches behind the number one team after the break. Friday Night Fights returns January 7th, 10 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. Or to re-record your personal greeting, press 2. Hey, this is the freak. I'm not on my desk right now. No. Hey, this is the franchise. Franchise. That's area. Hey, this is the freaky franchise here. Big time Timmy Jim's office here. No one even calls me that. Hi. This is Tim Linscombe. If you leave your name, number, and a short message, I'll be hey, sure to get... Hey, big time Timmy Jim, what's up? If you're unhappy with your greeting... Welcome back to the ESPN3.com Halftime Report. With four NCAA national titles, a FIBA World Championship, and a gold medal, it's safe to say that Mike Krzyzewski is one of the best basketball coaches on the planet. But behind every great coach is an even better staff. Earlier this season, our cameras went all access with the number one ranked Duke Blue Devils and got to know the men behind the man. Take five minutes of uh, five on zero. 10 minutes of shooting, another five minutes of five on zero, and another 10 minutes of shooting. The great thing about me having my former players on the staff is one day would be coaches whether they were on my staff or not. So it's not like we're making a former player a coach. Those guys want to be coaches, and they have the ability to do it. The, uh, the second thing is that they know Duke. They know what it is to play here. We're in our 31st year here. They know me. Uh, We've been working together a long time now. I mean, he's going to play well. Just coming, coming back and just all sped up. I have ultimate confidence in them. And they have a huge part in everything that we do. Like many of the drills uh, that we do, they orchestrate. They not just run, they set them up. But what we need to do is change drill, close outs while we're doing, you know, because then it's a matter That's of what it comes. That's what it becomes. Okay, this is what I want. Pat's got the ball up top. We're going to hit Nate. Flash. Okay, now you catch. You catch, and what do you do? You face. If it's not there, what's going to be open is here. Now what do you do? Now you're diving, and when you dive, if I'm Josh, and I hit, and when I dive, Todd's the middle of the zone, I'm going right into him. I'm not flashing. I'm going right into him. And I'm, here we go, I'm, I'm wiping out their middle basket defender. And as that happens, Ryan's coming right behind and we get that action. I'm going to hit the guy dive, I'm going to hit the guy diving. Here we go, X, flash, good, look, good, good, hit, nice, good. Everything we do, let's be sharp. Okay, now what we have after the X, as you dive, Todd's going to have bumped you out. And I'm going to hit, and now we get the second dive. So now as Ryan flashes, and I get hit, now, Josh, you're going to hit him. So we get this, we get this up and down action, and then we get the dive. Here we go, X. Good. So just run the same thing. I got Miles' spot. 
Okay, you let Kyrie clear through. Now you go. Okay, you roll. You don't get it. Once you don't get it right here, Kyle's going to cut. So once you don't get it, you're coming back up. So we give him that open space to back cut. And now you're here ready for this. And then you dribble, hand off the other way. Okay. Good, look for it, good. Good, good, good. Nice, 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 good job, good job, perfect, good job. So as you see this, make a read. If you're gonna go that way, you should come up through the top. And then let Seth go through here. Another good thing on through is you just come off and Seth, if you see your man trail and tell Tyler, curl it, curl it, curl it, curl it. If you hear that, you curl. And now Seth's gonna come off that way. You guys talk those out and make reads. Let's go through. Make sure you look at the basket. When you, when you show ball, you want to look at that basket, then rip through. Don't just go to the motion. Sell that fake, sell that fake. There we go, Miles. Good job, good job. Get in there, get in there, get in there. What we got, what we got? Speed it up, my Mason, it's too slow. It's too slow. Come on. You got to get it all. Five. Sell it, sell it. When you show that fake and you get him up in the air, hurry up, rip through, drop step that thing and get it off. Good job. There we go, Ryan. That's a wrap on the ESPN3.com Halftime Report. I'm Cassidy Hubbard. Enjoy the second half. Six and six, Washington, ESPN Radio's coverage beginning with a pregame show driven by Honda at 9 p.m. Eastern. And then the game at 10, Bill Rosinski, David Norrie, and Joe Shad have a rematch of the September 18th meeting in Seattle, won by Nebraska 56 to 21. Taylor Martinez, a Nebraska quarterback, 58 yards of rushing, shy of becoming just the third quarterback in NCAA history to record a thousand dollar or a thousand yards rushing and a thousand passing in his freshman season. ESPN football analyst Robert Smith says Martinez, certainly a player to watch for in the game tonight. Definitely Taylor Martinez for Nebraska. Now, he had an excellent start to the season, had some problems in a few games, but then got injured. His ankle was really banged up. He's back healthy now. I think all the time that he's had to heal that ankle since the Big 12 championship game is going to help tremendously. And I'm telling you, he is, I think, the fastest quarterback in America. And I know a lot of people say Denard Robinson, but you see this guy run. He is an excellent runner and needed to work on his, on his throwing motion and on his accuracy, got a little bit better with that. And I'm sure, once again, it's so helpful for these players that haven't been playing a lot to get that extra bowl practice. I'm sure he's had a chance to work on that. And he should be out of Bo Pelini's doghouse by now. He was getting yelled at in a few of the games back there pretty bad on the sidelines. Quarterback news in the NFL. Joe Webb expected to start for the Minnesota Vikings. Brett Favre has not yet passed a concussion test required to return to play. Philadelphia Inquirer reports Kevin Cobb will start for the Philadelphia Eagles Sunday. That allows Michael Vick to rest his injured leg. Mark Sanchez will start for the New York Jets Sunday against Buffalo. Trent Edwards starts for Jacksonville. David Garrard, finger surgery today. He's out Sunday and will miss the postseason if the Jaguars advance. And Charlie Whitehurst expected to start for the Seattle Seahawks, although injured Matt Hasselbeck is not completely ruled out from playing coming up we'll take a look at the nfc west the game coming up between the rams and seahawks everything's on the line i'm chuck wilson this is football tonight on espn radio and espnradio.com your home for the bowl championship series espn radio not all criminals carry a gun or a knife some simply need to pick up the phone or ring a doorbell in times like these Senior citizens are often the targets of con artists, hawking shady investment deals and phony charities. Be wary of strangers in your neighborhood soliciting services or asking for money. Many cons come in the way of phony home repair services. These thieves offer major home repairs at bargain prices, but they end up taking your money and never finishing the work. Don't become a victim. Be skeptical of offers that are too good to be true. Never allow anyone to force you to sign something and never give personal information to people you don't know. Get estimates and never pay in advance. If you suspect fraud, get the contractor's license plate number and call the police immediately. If something doesn't seem right, it's probably not. Protect yourself. Visit ncpc.org to learn more.
A message from the U.S. Department of Justice, National Crime Prevention Council, and the Ad Council. ESPN Radio. Scott Van Pelt. Trek Cole, the Philadelphia Eagles, our guest. Let's talk. Let's talk uh, about something that's near and dear to your heart. What's more fun, hunting a quarterback or hunting a quail? I know that you're a guy that likes to get out there and and take down a buck or a quail. What's more fun, if you take a bird out of the sky or if you take down Eli Manning? I can't. I can't think what. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll just say this way. I'll think. Here at the Pavilion on the campus of Villanova University, we have got a good one here this holiday week. Number eight, Villanova trailing Temple by one as we get set to start the second half. In the history of the Big Five, there are a lot more games like this than the other way. Villanova really trying to see if they can turn it around with their speed. Speed it up, and occasionally they did. I mean, I think it's a lot of numbers when you think of 40, 39. I, mean, I think Villanova, in a way, should be happy with that. But the ability to push it and get invigorated was lacking. Uh, they tried to create some... Offense off their defense. This is great hustle by Pena on the follow. This is some kind of the motion that's necessary. Again, the understanding of when to go, when to kick it out. This gets Stokes an open look as they pushed it before the defense was set. They don't recognize and get out and challenge one of the premier shooters in the country. The end of the half. Waves. Breakdown. Crossover. Pirouette. Knocked it down. That was extraordinary, and it had to be because of this guy. He has just been sensational. Wouldn't you agree, Scott? Absolutely. Juan Fernandez has lit it up from the outside. He has found his teammates, and he has been the catalyst for his team just about at every step of the way offensively. That's what Jay Wright and company have, I'm sure, have been talking about at halftime. And Villanova trailing at home in this game more than they have in all six games combined. Fisher kind of taken out of the loop early, trying to get back into it with the up and under and gets his own rebound. There's Waynes. Oh, my! <laughs> oh, is he aggressive? The slide by, the inability to get in position to pick up the charge. He's got 11, and Villanova's got the lead back. There's the high low. Pretty. Got to catch it, though. After the fifth lead change, here comes the speed of Waynes once again. And he bought the contact that's going to send him to the free throw line. Are they invigorated? A little bit different right now. Taking a look back at the stat sheet. Ramon Moore leading the way with 13 points, three out of four from beyond the arc. Fernandez with the rebounds and assists to go along with his point total. And Corey Stokes, a lot of his scoring coming from the free throw line. Villanova, a lot of what they've done coming in the paint. Now you knew the guards were going to step up. Waynes has been sensational, I think, picking up the speed. Of course, Stokes, one of those guys that has developed more of a game on with the bounce. Team calls him Roadrunner. Because he just goes and takes mm -hmm. off. Beep, beep. Mm -hmm. There's that make the free throw, get the pressure set, Pena. Tough to see over. Spanning halftime, six points in 42 seconds for Waynes and a three-point going over lead. And he wanted to the steal there. He got it. Well, that kid really has terrific anticipation. Fisher. That would have been a big hit. The building would have exploded. Instead, Michael Eric gets the rebound. Don't get away from your game. They did get away from yeah. their game. Yeah, that's one of the first. I think maybe the first mistake he's made. Here comes a roadrunner again. And this time they cut him off. Yaru called for the offensive foul, his third. You don't mind a big guy getting a foul like that, though. That's aggressive. A little drop step and skirt him would have made it a better trip. But you can see the energy a lot different. Pushing it down the floor, getting the early entries, trying to dominate that time low. He'll have to be careful now on the backside of that defense. There's Eric who sat with the two fouls for most of the first half. Trying to be a factor inside, but Waynes, right now this is his basketball game. He's running it. He got the message. Stepping out. And Villanova still can't find a consistent rhythm shooting the basketball. And one and done. Nice job by Temple. Moore's first shot of the second half. Rim it out. And that last touch Giroux, so Temple will keep it. A nice play by Moore, though. The tournament, a little hesitation to blow by. If you're Temple, they got to weather this storm a little bit. You know, get this 
back in shape and form that you'd like. And that's where you got to put the ball. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah, nice call, coach. <laughs> Now Fernandez continues to love playing against Villanova. His career high at 33 last year against the Wildcats at the Leo Corey Center. He's got 14 in this one. Very tough. Oh my goodness. Not a good look. Zigzag and throw it the other way. But that last trip, the inbounder Fernandez, he's the guy that's dangerous. Ends up with the ball and a little knockdown. like he's looking one way but he's looking all ways at the same time and look how high the dribble is too now normally you should be able to steal it but he does a great job protecting got some help from randall <laughs> behind the back to eric he's got it all and more for three in and out it was halfway down before rimming out you can just see the attack much more formidable right now stokes the miss Another one and done. Yeah, nice job by Allen. Three on three game. Find the open man. And that ball last touched the hand of LaVoy Allen. Well, back it'll go the other way. Yeah, that last trip down here was Allen that actually kept it alive. I, I said, Uri, a terrific defensive rebounding team. Fisher taking a seat. They're trying to get him back into his game now. You can see he's had a level of frustration here tonight. Two early fouls, a significant time on the bench in the first half. Had a good game against Mama, eight out of ten. No doubt his season so far has been streaky. Good ball reversal. Everybody stays at home for Temple. No gambles. Talking to Fran Duffy before the game, he said, I said, your defense looks great. He said, our numbers look good. No, your team looks good. <laughs> Well, his humility uh, prevails, doesn't it? There he goes with the bounce. Ready. Stokes and a big time take to the hole. Got to use the left. Wayne's wanted the steal, couldn't get it. It's a heck of a matchup right there. It is. Good, good, good feet, good hands. Tough combination to play against. The drive. It looked like he jumped and came back down, at least to the crowd here. And now Wayne's one on three. I'm going to call foul before he took the extra step. Boy, did he split that with strength? Whew, what a push by the little guy. What a different pace to begin this second half, but it shows up for Villanova on the scoreboard on top by three. Well, it is now Temple trying to figure out a way to come back and change the pace of the game, trailing by three. Temple's already upset. One top ten opponent this month, December 9th. They beat number 10 Georgetown, thanks to the career night from Ramon Moore. Junior poured in a career-high 30 points. The Hoyas 
had one desperation look at the buzzer. And it was no good. Temple won 68-65. Not only a key win for the resume, but also the 400th win for their head coach, Brand Dunby, in his coaching career. Hey, what a night, huh? Beautiful performance against the Georgia. I think he was playing very well then. Of course, Notre Dame got the better of them. You know, mixed back so far against the ranked teams, and then they've got that date coming up late in February. That's almost a John Cheney scheduling thing right there as they take on Duke. They've always played good teams, haven't they? You're right about John. He played anybody, anywhere, anytime. He would like this team as well. I mean, they're always in control. His old adage of speed kills sort of prevails. Temple loves to control the tempo. That's Cheek, and it's a brick. So Temple now down a chance to get back to within one or tie the game on this possession. Tough matchup for Cheek. Oh, my! Tough. It's not easy to defend no matter who you are. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but I think when you've got a bigger guy, you can break some ankles and twist some knees. Just trying to buy some time for the nice entry. That's a great seal by Yaru, and he's going to get a chance at a three-point play as Allen curled up on his back. If you notice, nobody on the weak side on that particular play as well, but you can just see he's salivating. He's got the big guy. He knows he can either blow by him, put him on a string, dance a little, and a little twine by Fernandez, and nobody on the other side. So you, a lot of people say, well, where's the weak side help? Well, everybody was lifted. Great entry. And as you mentioned, the hold off, beautiful. So back to a three-point game as Mukhtar Yaru cashes in on the three. Nearly desperation time, but Fernandez doesn't lose his cool. And look how Fernandez made it, made himself available. Look how he found the open man. And off the miss, Payne the quick outlet. Walk. Oh, I thought he got away with it. Fernandez wanted a call that he didn't get, and now Stokes the other way. Got it. That's what Fisher has to do. Get some others involved and let it come to him. Crowd feels it now. This is that home court advantage we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And that's a travel. A little too fancy, not France style either. I think he's looking for the timeout, is he? Yeah, he's looking for the timeout. Uh, right here, that's one I thought he got away with the walk, but on the far side, you push it, some good things happen. Get those toes organized, nylon, the Bayonne Bomber. 30 seconds, Why don't that becomes a full.
Well, that is the 90 consecutive wins, the longest streak in Division One history. It was Stanford that last beat UConn in the 2008 National Semifinal. Dave O'Brien, Doris Burke, Jimmy Dyke standing by for that one when this one's done. Incredible. Look at what Gino's been able to do there. The Philly boy percolating up in stores. Great story. So now, let's see what the timeout did for Temple. Try and get it back under control. That's what that was all about. Well, now is joining their largest lead of the game right now at six points. without Waynes, who has been an effective point guard for them in these situations. Yaru, face up, taking it to the hole, and he got the basket and a foul. What a great use of the clock, too. And they were stymied. The big fella just a little relaxing defensively by Temple. A little three-quarter, and you give room here. This is just a nice ball fake. Terrific, huh? Just out-leaping Eric. He thought he got away with it. As it is, his third personal foul. And Yaru missing. We got a lane violation. You got a lane violation. I believe they got Lavoy Allen. You know he's important to this Villanova team in terms of the NCAA tournament, and they, they need some inside punch because you're not going to get away with the dribble drive all the time. He's developing nicely. He's going to be a very good prospect. Had the second opportunity that was a gift, but didn't hit on it. Temple just two out of nine from the floor here in the second half. And now make it two out of ten. Fisher. Well, everybody stayed on the floor. Great preparation. But Payne has got that mid-range jump shot, and Villanova's got their largest lead at double digits. Just a different push of the ball. Getting some early stuff. Oh, not a good foul. It's not a good foul at all. Happened right in front of us. Fisher on the reach, knocking Fernandez down and picking up his third. That last trip, I thought Fernandez was running to it on his own there. That jump shot, and let the ball move a little bit. Here's this little giveaway. He got great size. Take away the vision. Straddle the legs. Cheek went for it. Almost got it, and now they're calling foul. I think he got the inside hand, you know, the denial. I don't I, think he agrees. <laughs> He's got great composure over there. I don't think he has to bring those suits to the dry cleaners, I'll tell you that. <laughs> right, you see the right hand went in. If he went in with the left, he would have gotten the basketball, would have gotten, there wouldn't have been a call, it would have been the out of bounds. The question is, the official was right on top of it. Ed Corbett didn't call the foul. More. The miss, came you the rebound, and off the quick outlet, Wayne stepped on the sideline. Well, that's the second time Fernandez has done that on both sides of the floor. I thought he caused a walk on bo in both cases. Here they get the ball back. Pretty good heads up play to save a fast break. Put the fire out early. Heady play. I think what Jay is saying, he needs, he has a right to come down, but you don't have a right to go forward. That, that's the difficulty on that particular play. That's a good point. Nice play. And Allen got fouled. He's going to the free throw line. Key, who is his foul on? I guess it's on Cheek. It will be on Dominic Cheek. Oh, what a big body by Allen, too. He carves out some territory on that ball screen. Nice presentation, and of course, Fernandez on the money with the delivery. The question was, was it Cheeks fourth or Fisher's fourth? It's Cheeks fourth. That going to change a little bit about what Villanova can do in terms of the rotation mm -hmm. for a bit. Allen hitting on the first. And Yaru coming back into the game as Cheek will take a seat. Now Jay's got that ability to play. You mentioned earlier in the game, the ability to play big at times. They didn't possess that in recent years. You're not afraid to go to guys, play three bigs and two little, or go four little guys and one big. So back down to an eight-point game, seven points and five boards for the boy Allen.
This is starting a little slow, this particular trip. Nice pin down. Turn and face. Oh, my, look at the play by your room. Uh, room service. He can carry them all. Full extension. And a great job by Allen to take away the baseline. He thought he had sealed the deal. You tell me that's a soccer player, right? <laughs> a lot of good ones, huh? Elijah Wan, Patrick Ewing. Something about the footwork. That's what Yaru says. It helped him with the footwork for basketball. As he tries to learn this sport. Fernandez stepping out over Yaru. Got it from three. The kid's got confidence. Just understands what's going on. What a very alert. Shot. Oh. <laughs> and now Villanova calls for the timeout. Wow. Well, if the country hasn't seen him, he is something, Fernandez. I just love this sticking with it. My little head and shoulder really froze Hallard. Was that a kiss? I think it was. A little smooch. And just the on the string, you got a bigger guy, make him dance a little bit, lose his balance, and then drill a deep one. So you're root. 12 points, four boards, five out of seven for the floor. And Jay Wright trying to make sure his team continues to hold control of this game. There's that hepatitis B last year, slowed LaRue down. Yaru, let me get that straight. A uh, big upside in his talent. A little bit of his own look now. Drive the gaps, a trap out of it. He said he stepped out of bounds. Yeah, it's amazing. Turnover. You got to be ready, right, Scott? Take a look right there. Antonio Pena just got what looks like his right thumb taken care of, and he's going to come back into the game now, wearing a bandage on that hand. LaVoy Allen finishes off easily. Temple's not going away. No, nah, that's smart. Nice, ready preparation, understanding the press and the trap, and a great location pass. Wood travel to the basketball. Great job challenging by Jefferson. He got right up, forced him to put it on the deck. Brand Temple's Duffy, tough. Fran Duffy's team does not blink. Villanova still leads it by five.
For those out there who may ask, what is the Philadelphia Big Five? This is the Philadelphia Big Five. It sure is. Uh, moved uptown from the Fluster. When I was an undergrad, that's where all the games were played. A great feeling. A hot ticket, too. This could have picked uh, packed the Wachovia, I think. Oh, yeah, probably. Right? Under 11 and a half to go. And Juan Fernandez has got his season high of 20 points. Continuing the comeback. Temple was down by 10. And with that tip, they cut it down to a three-point game. A nice slip, too. Once again, they do it on the wing. Allen usually finishes. I think it was a Jefferson that got a piece of that tip. Yep. Antonio Pena is in the game. The black wrap on his right thumb. Yaru, nowhere to go. Now he just chests you out, doesn't he? Strong. Tremendous job in man defense all night for Temple. Fisher around the screen. In among the trees. Good look for Pena. And shot clock violation, no foul call. Another good trip. got in on him. Another good trip defensively. A nice read with the pass, but the recovery is magnificent. Team D is extraordinary. Now Villanova will try to push that pace again with pressure. Temple, for the most part, has handled it. Moore on the floater. Blocking foul on Fisher. It's going to be his fourth. Boy, this is what they worked on yesterday. Being in the right spot, posting and attacking when necessary. So more to the line. And a two-shot foul. He can get his team to within one. Last year, the Atlantic 10 sixth man of the year. This year, a starter. And Fisher takes a seat. Two fouls in the first half. Now two here in the second. A little bit of a lull now again, right? Favorite example. A little spiral. Nice tip. That is a great Clear. job by Jefferson on the rebound. Good extra pass to the inside to Allen. We got a tie game. And more does more than score. Nice entry. 10 0 Temple run after trailing by double digits. That's Waynes with a hand in his face. Can't hit it. Temple can take the lead. A traveling violation. Okay. More with the rebound the other He does a lot of nice things. Good D here. Pena, terrific play defensively. Too late. Hernandez, little short, but more an offensive rebound. Hernandez was wide open. They took a while to get it. He had a clean look. Both teams have a rebounding advantage on the season tonight. It belongs to Temple. Same play, a little slip. Surprised Jefferson didn't go up with that. Yeah, trip. reluctant. Way outside the other side. Scooty Randall from downtown. And it's a 13 to nothing run for Temple. Jay Wright needs a timeout. Woo. Wow. What preparation. ESPN, the home court of college hoops. Friday countdown to New Year with the college basketball marathon on ESPN 2. It begins at noon in the Big Ten, Northwestern and Purdue. Then at 2 Eastern, the College of Charleston taking on Tennessee. College basketball on ESPN 2 Friday. Both games also available online at ESPN3.com. Juan Johnson, pretty tough. He's on Moore for Purdue. How about, you had mentioned during commercial in a timeout, France timeout, they came back, so prepared, got control of the game, in the right spot versus the press, fast break opportunity, entry passes, the extra look, just solid. You start looking at what this team looks like for Fran Dunphy this year. Again, 29 wins last year. Three Atlantic 10 championships in a row, and you've got to look at this team and consider them the favorite this year. Mm -hmm. uh, well, these are two of the best young coaches, I think, in the country. These guys really know what they're doing. Good program, solid. Track the type of people schools are proud of. Different set now. He's in the stack. 
They haven't had a way to make something happen consistently in the half-court offense all night. And yeah, they've gone large now. Nice spread fade. Made it happen there. Got the right guy the basketball. Well, reading how you're played. So essential in college basketball. Terrific cut. Stokes stroking. He's got 19. Fernandez got himself caught along the baseline. They'll keep the possession with 18 left on the timer. And yeah, he's the guy that's dangerous. He triggers the inbounds, but just this little thing. You think you're going that way. You step back. A great read and the pass on time. And just pure, beautiful stroke. Here he is with the slap back. Good preparation. And Sutton got caught on the inside. That's an experienced player going up against an inexperienced player. And Sutton didn't have his feet set. So the boy Allen will go to the free throw line. I just love the feel Fernandez has for the game. He knew he had drawn to his partner on the baseline. Temple this week in the AP poll is ranked 25th. Interestingly, these teams have met as ranked teams three times, including tonight. The previous two, Temple won both. Villanova is the number 18 in both polls, including the ESPN USA Today poll. That just shows you got to play your best. I mean, uh, right now, different look, different philosophy that they're accustomed to. See if they can make the adjustments down the, the stretch here. Yaru on the turnaround with soft touch. Does that help? A prayerful bounce, huh? Walking through here during a recent weekday all by himself on the court with one student manager just shooting from all different spots on the floor trying to make his game better. Well, Sutton in the defense here. Block shots, rebounds. Holy oh, foul. He got away with it. Did you see that? Yes. And now Waynes runs past Fernandez. Finds the shooter. Got it! The push. That's what they need. Everybody settles defensively in the three-second lane and find that pure delivery. Three-point game as we come up on seven minutes left to go. Moore can't get it to fall from the inside and pay me the rebound. Nice job by Sutton helping out defensively. Look at Wayne. Got it! Kid's amazing. He's got a motor. Overdrive. A little guy. Doing it without Corey Fisher. He's on the bench with four fouls. And the crowd now standing as Fran Duffy is going to take a timeout. Only one left now for the Temple Owls. This is a game of taking a hit, take your opportunity. With Stokes earlier on the fade. And they're finding a guy who can make some shots. The push, the find, and once again, just beautiful basketball. And Temple now, as they've done before, trying to get control of the Temple, the pace of the game, so that they don't get the Wildcats in the open floor. They're much better. And Williams is always in the attack mode. Solid. That's a key, something that Jay Wright stressed to him in the preseason. And he's always stressed to Corey Fisher as well, which is always look like you're trying to take the ball and drive, even if you're looking to pass. Mm -hmm. You've got to sell the fact that you're driving to the hoop. He's done that, and that's how he found Stokes both times for the three. And Fisher's better when he does that and does find some people. Once in a while, you're a little too deep. Scotty Reynolds did that when he was younger. Against the big, you're not going to get the call in the Big East or games like this. Love this matchup. I could watch this one all night. Mm -hmm. That's what he wants now. Off that switch, Sutton kind of feeling like he's out on an island, but Fernandez picked up the dribble and Sutton knocked it away. And Waynes comes out with the basketball. Oh, big play by Sutton. Sutton's been a big factor. The little things that help your team win. Settling it in with a five-point lead into the half-court offense for the Wildcats again. 
There's that little circle play to the to run. Stokes then pops out. Off the screen, Waves. Drifted on the shot. And a foul call on the rebound. And to send it back the other way. The call is on Isaiah Armwood, and Temple gets the basketball back when we come back to the pavilion. exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. City Hall with Philadelphia stone throw away. And a five-point lead for the number eight Villanova Wildcats on top of Temple with under six minutes to go. We got the opportunity to top off what was in your drink cup, maybe get an e extra snack. We got a good one coming down the wire here. We also have a good one coming up immediately following this one. It's that longest streak in college basketball history. The Yukon Huskies taking on Stanford. Dave O'Brien, Doris Burke, Jimmy Dykes, tip time at 9 10 Eastern for that one. You know, yesterday at practice, uh, Fran mentioned uh, Governor Rendell's wussy comment. It was pretty funny. You say, about that? we can't play like wussies, just like the governor <laughs> said. <laughs> and they have it. Well, Allen hitting on the first. Villanova's foul at the other end. Once they're seventh, Temple will shoot the rest of the way. And Allen missing. Pena coming down with a rebound. Four-point ball game, 5.52 to go. They trapped out of this zone earlier now. Villanova has to be alert. Don't have the handlers on the floor with the bigs now. You got one of them. He's yep. got the ball. It's all bigs aside from that, although Stokes, another guard, they're trying to run him off the screen to get him open. A little ball screen. I thought they might go high-low with the bigs. Got five. five. Wayne sees it. Got to shoot it. Got it on the rim to avoid the violation, but Temple down with the rebound. Smart adjustment defensively. And Fernandez, a little kiss, won't go. Playing great. Sutton. Needed him right now. And Waynes to the baseline will be fouled by Moore. That's team foul number five for the Owls. See the points of the paint. Villanova has kind of dominated that here tonight. The zone really, uh, they've got Wames out there. He's going to have to run the show. They're going to have to get better perimeter passing. Uh, it's been a nice little move by Fran. At what point do you take the chance with Fisher? Depends. I say that because, he, you know, they're playing well at times without him. So it's not where they really need him. But you got a good free throw shooter over there and a guy who can create offense. Tough look. Yeah, that was a tough one. Yeah. Straight on the hardest. I'd say that the, the, the TV timeout you might see Fisher. Just a guess. 
working his way inside. Jefferson found no way to the hoop, but he found the open man. Ho! Oh! And another opportunity. Moore. Contact. No call. And now we're we getting confirmation. The ball's going back the other way. I sort of pointing out. No foul. I think it might be Villanova's ball. Yep. They changed it. Mm. It was Villanova's ball. They changed it back over. John Cal came in and changed the call. Okay, Sutton's got the, his hands on a lot of deal. The ball may have hit the Villanova player on the floor. That's possibly what happened. Good job by the officiating crew communicating there. Oh, not a good look there. Once again, look who's in the way. Sutton, he's been magnificent defensively. Well, his arms are about eight feet long. <laughs> Ooh, that's a wall. And Sutton going to get called for the foul on the take to the hole by Jefferson. He'll go to the free throw line. Was that a travel? Well, I, I guess he stayed in the same spot. If you move laterally, they'll call it. The coaches teach you have a pivot foot and just hold on to it. So Jefferson, the sophomore from Chester. He has not been a good free throw shooter, just 41%. There you go. 423 left. Fisher will return. Well, people recognize him. What a great job. The Reese Sutton has done. Good performance. One out of two for Jefferson. Three-point game, 4.23 to go. Fran Duffy goes back to, let's say, man-to-man -man because of the three-guard luck. Starters back on the floor for both sides right now. Waynes up nice. and under, got it knocked away, and he touched it last. Boy, great D. Do they collect at the point of attack tempo? Terrific understanding and reaction. Everybody gets over here. Three. Don't make it easy for the little guy. I gotta tell you, I've been tremendously impressed with Temple's defense all night. Mm -hmm. Nothing's come easy for Villanova. A lot of bigs for the press. And there's a lot of long arms to look through. And back into the sure hands of a point guard. But Fernandez with a tough. Uh, that's a tough entry. And he had the big guy, Yaru, on him, too. I thought he might take him. So now Waynes will set it up. Around the screen, Stokes got it. Ooh. And one of the few mistakes I think Jefferson made. He trailed but didn't hug. Corey Stokes with 24 points. Well, don't leave your feet. They took a gamble and they lost. And Stokes forced to give up the foul. That's going to send the boy out into the free throw line when we come back. Corey Stokes, the guy who's making it happen in the half court offense for Villanova.
said that no man is an island. <laughs> That's an island right there. So cherry and white right in the middle of Nova Nation. Out of the student section. Maurice Sutton has come in and provided a defensive lift. He has just been terrific in the right spot, influencing shots, getting pieces. A sure goal. You mentioned the long arm, special delivery. Wow. Makes it easy. Negating an opportunity. I love the strategy on both benches, though. There's so much going on in this game. Well, Sutton sits now as the boy Allen goes to the free throw line to shoot two, trying to cut into this five point Villanova lead. the first team all Atlantic 10 player last year likely to become the all time leading rebounder in Temple history before it's all said and done this year. He's got 15 points now for the game and all league defensive guy too right. Yep. Chris John Baum does the radio. He's going to erase that record at some point right. Yes he is. Nice pass. And Yaru showing that athleticism, but can't get the basket. Jefferson. Allen the trailer. Smart. Looking for Fernandez. Great denial by Stokes. Don't let him get it. Cut the head off. That's what a lot of guys like to do. Now they got Stokes on Fernandez now, the bigger guard. Allen, good look inside. Ball knocked away. And a held ball possession arrow belongs to Temple. Well, that tells you something about Allen. That was a terrific look by the big guy, wasn't it? The whole trip without Fernandez, and right here with a nice find, avoiding the charge. Fisher took a real chance on personal foul number five right there. Fernandez, the guy in the inbounds. Here's the slap back. Stokes gave up the sideline. Tough shot. And Fisher. Picks the air ball out of the air. 2.20 left to go. He was looking for the foul. Pretty possession good. by possession right now. Pretty good preparation defensively, too, Fernandez, right? Right on him. Double him. Quick hands by Randall and Sutton on his way to the hole. Draws the contact. Well, you never know who's going to step up and help you. The kids get an opportunity, sees the eye. And this is a kid who I think. You watch him in practice, great hands. He's at the point of his zone in a press. I think his footwork is coming along and really deepens the bench. Sutton 75% from the free throw line, but a miss. Have a chance to extend it to a five point lead. His sister played basketball in North Carolina, Candace Sutton Pearson. Mom played at North Carolina State. And dad played football at Norfolk State. Hera misses in big ones, but oh. Jefferson lost the ball. Oh, Yaru got his hand in there. That's one you've got to grab and seal. That gives him an opportunity to get Waynes back in offensively. Williams is very good with the penetration. Fernandez got to be careful. And that's going to be a push. And a one and one opportunity coming from Malik Waynes with 151 left to go. Mm -hmm. ESPN, the home court of college hoops. Friday, New Year's Eve college basketball marathon highlighted by two great games. Florida Gators and Xavier at 4 Eastern. Ohio State Buckeyes and Indiana Hoosiers at 6 Eastern. College basketball at ESPN 2 Friday. Both games available online at ESPN3.com. Titus and Macklin up front. To Florida can get going that tough Southeastern Conference. So Malik Waves. First one is good for Waynes. You may remember last year he wore number five. This year wears number two. His childhood friend Brandon Savage, who wore number two, was accidentally shot back in May. Plays at Wilmington. Is not playing this year. Asked Malik, can you wear my number and carry me on the floor this year? And Malik said, sure, I'll do it for you. How about that? 
because Fernandez, who had been yo-yoed in the first half, the reason being he had to play this whole second half and they're trying to keep him away from the basketball. This is a huge possession for Temple. Inside, Fernandez had position, but he also had Yaru. Nice. Ooh. And Pena thought he had all ball, but instead he gets called for the foul. And it means free throws for Temple with 127 left to go. That's two shots the rest of the way for Temple. Well, I thought that was interesting that Fernandez posted up because he couldn't get it on the perimeter. Just too many big guys under there. So back to the line goes LaVoy Allen. And one more try coming for the Temple big man. Fisher returns. And Sutton takes a seat. Seven for 11 from the line tonight for LaVoy Allen. There's his eighth free throw and a five point game now. Pressure coming for the Owls. This is the point of the game where if you get something easy, you're going to take it early. Otherwise, be patient. we will give away here by Moore. So 120 to go, and Fisher will go to the free throw line. Well, their guards make free throws, too. He's around 77%. That's what makes them tough coming down the stretch. They have a drill that they do at the end of every practice called win the game, where there's free throws to be made, a point system, there's a win and a loss, but it's also what are we doing in this situation, down two, mm -hmm. up, up one, that type of year, uh, during the course of the year. And what they do is they do it every single day. Well, Corey Fisher went back and pointed to it. The NCAAs against Pittsburgh, when they advanced to the Final Four, he was six for six late. And he said what was going through his head was win the game. Mm -hmm. All the games coaches play, right? Just to convince them they can make it down the stretch. And the big fella Sutton comes in now. A big presence at the point. Look at the wingspan here. Hanging on the other side. Got to be tough to see over the top. They get it there. Nice. And they beat it. More on the lay-in. And a quick timeout for Fran Dunphy. That's it. Can't stop the clock again. But he's back within five now with 109 left to go. How about that, huh? Great position basketball. Knowing where to be, went to cut, went to dive. They got the big guy here and a big guy here. So what do they do? They bring it up and go cross court. This is just terrific basketball. Hit it and go. Solid. Nice give. And now you set. You got to run a lot of things out of this timeout now. What are you going to do with your defense? What are you going to do when you get the basketball? So it's like now this is where Fernandez becomes more important, I think, is to get everybody in the proper position. If you're Villanova, you just tried to skate through the Philadelphia Big Five. And what do you get next? Well, you got the Big East. Mm -hmm. Some easy days ahead. <laughs> Good. Nothing easy. That very simple. Rutgers got them fired up. Number 20, Louisville. Connecticut, which has been maybe the story of the Big East so far. Syracuse undefeated to this point. Mm -hmm. And all that little game of Georgetown. <laughs> Just in case you're uh, falling asleep a little bit. There's Providence playing well. The Cuse with Jimmy Bayheim. I think we're getting a little smile out of him on occasion now. Maybe. 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 It's a little frosty on occasion. So Villanova with the basketball. Now you see the reset. Villanova has the possession arrow. Next foul is a one and one opportunity. After that, they'll be shooting two. All right, if you can get the ball out of the guard's hands and let a big guy make a decision, that would be very helpful to Temple. Conversely, keep it on the perimeter. Fisher, Waynes, and Stokes. Connecticut, Stanford coming up next. Oh, oh your room got stopped by the rim. It happens. Got himself too far underneath, unaccustomed. To be in that position. What a spin out by Waynes to set this up, though. Knowing where you are is very important in life, as well as on the basketball floor. And Stokes, not known as the ball handler, gets it back to one. And a foul call to reach in. And Fernandez just fouled out of the ball game. Well, he gave it some effort. One guard to another, he knows. A little different when he's not on the floor for this Temple team. 
international basketball players. What's up to 80, I believe, in the NBA? Goodness. You know, see why. What a marvelous night. 20 points, five rebounds, the assists. Playing the way he did defensively. Single handedly helped his team out to the lead in this game. Tried to keep him in it. Well, this is a very good Temple team, no question about it. As you mentioned, they're going to have a heck of a year. Uh, Villanova, I think, still finding themselves. You know, what type of rotations he wants. But he does have, Jay, that is, so many ways of going, whether it's large, small, press, half court. We told you about the Connecticut Stanford game. On the women's side, that is starting on ESPNU right now. We'll switch to it as soon as we are done here at Villanova. And Fisher misses on the front end. The door stays open for Temple. Quick hitter, you got to go at it. I think I go for the two. And Fisher got the rebound. Wild scramble. And the reach in foul will send him back to the free throw line. Mm. Kids really think the three is going to get you right back, and it ends up hurting you counterproductive unless it's off a you know a dribble drive kick out or an offensive rebound kick out. Go to the rim, get settled, clock stops, you can be organized. So Fisher, who just missed from the line, misses again. Mm. Again, the door stays open. The best this can be now is a two-possession game. Ever since you said win it, he has struggled. Think about it. I don't want that kind of responsibility <laughs> at all. It's on the second. Six-point game. Again, 40.8 to go. No timeouts left. You have to fire a three. No, you know, I still go click. Get the deuce. Go right at the rim. See if you can get to the foul line. Without Fernandez, it's not nearly as easy. No. More nice crossover. And he got caught in midair. They say the ball last touched Villanova. With 27 seconds left to go, Temple keeps it. And Jay with Sutton on the floor for that very reason. Just took over that trip. Vallejo looking to inbound. They don't have a lot of time to play with here. Randall from the foul line. Nearly an air ball and a rebound for Sutton. <laughs> and Sutton again turns into a factor. It's like reaching for the dinner rolls, right? <laughs> uh, you have no shot. That last piece of meat, I got it, Mom. <laughs> oh, he was five feet across the end line. So Villanova appears are going to survive. And wrap things up in the Philadelphia Big Five. An 11 point win over St. Joseph's. 10 point win over Penn. A near miss at LaSalle, in which they came back to win by three. And now they're going to knock off Temple to be crowned Philadelphia Big Five champions at 4 0. Oh. Yeah, this is a very good test for Villanova, I think. This is a very helpful game for them. And Temple should not be the least bit down. This is a very good basketball team. Played a terrific game away from home. Allen got hit. They gonna count that? Mm -hmm. It Starting counts. Out. Yep. A chance at a three-point play. With 16 seconds to go. I've seen it happen. I'm sure you have. I have. A mistake away. It's an opportunity to get it down to a five-point game now for LaVoy Allen. Well, this is where you have to be organized if you're Villanova. Who's taking it out? What are you going to set up to free yourself, extricate yourself from the defense? Hey, you're right. It's a mistake away. Mm -hmm. They wish they had him back on the floor right now. Full court pressure. Two possession game, 16 seconds. That's not the guy they wanted to foul. And they didn't have to. Wow. Eight seconds to go. Randall. Somebody's got to shoot it. It'll be Allen. Got it. With 2.3 left to go. Two point game. Wild comeback. Wayne's fouled with 1.4 left. Wow. We mentioned earlier two excellent coaches. Well, well groomed and prepared. Allen able to step out. He's got a nice little touch. That was 0 for 8, I think, going into this game, that period, right? 
0 for 8 from three point range on the year. Hits that one and puts this back in doubt, at least for right now. If Waynes doesn't hit two, Temple has a chance to fire a prayer. Seven for seven. Eight for eight. And Sutton will come back in. As a coach, I guess the only thing you're saying right now is no fouls under any circumstances for any reason <laughs> at all. Absolutely. Uh, the big thing also is where your position now, if he does miss this, got to go to half court at some point. He's, you saw Jay Wright say, just keep him in front of you. There you and go. there you go. Waynes with a smile as he leaves the foul line. They're not even going to bother trying the prayer. Jay Wright's team hangs on for a four-point victory over Fran Duffy's Temple Owls. Marvelous ball game. Once again, our final score, Villanova 78 and Temple 74. For Bill Raftery, I'm Scott Graham saying so long from the Pavilion. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now let's head it to Dave O'Brien in Stanford, California, as the number one UConn Huskies battle the number eight Stanford Cardinal.